B. Welcome to the Circle of Hecker. I'm Lady Amaris. So herbs. What herbs do I need to start witchcraft? And uh, this is this is a question that I've had quite a lot, not only with uh, some of my students, but but also um, questions that you've asked yourself. So I thought I would make a, a little video on some of the things that you can get. And these are inexpensive things that you can get. There is There are heaps of websites where you can get some of the more exotic herbs that um, don't necessarily grow in your area or they're just, you know, they're not things that you can grow uh, because of, of climate or, or whatnot. Um, but they're not necessary. These Some of these exotic herbs are great, but when it comes to doing uh, witchcraft, a lot of the times they're not necessary. Some of the, the simple herbs that you can have that uh, come in your pantry, uh, you've probably used them for cooking all the time. So these herbs are used in witchcraft and they've been used in witchcraft from time memorial. And uh, just having them in your, in your bag of tricks and understanding what you can use them for is, uh, is something that every new witch uh, can, um, you know, can do because a lot of the times you see lots of these things uh, to do with witchcraft and uh, the tools involved and some of the herbs and, and they can get quite expensive. So when you're starting out, you start out with the simple stuff. You start out with the things that you can get yourself and a lot of these herbs that you can find in your pantry already have dual, you know, triple, quadruple purposes. They're not just for one specific thing. They can be used for a, a variety of different things. So it means that you are maximizing the, the herbs that you have. It's fun to have all of these exotic herbs, you know, the, the mandrake and the mugwort and, and whatnot. But if it's not something that you can get straight away, then it's going to be a little harder. So you use the herbs that you have available to you at that time. And these herbs can be as powerful and as potent as any other herb. Uh, it's just how you use them. So uh, let's, let's go through it and um, enjoy. So all of these herbs are quite easily to come, come by. They're sold in most supermarkets. Um, better off if you can find them um, fresh but you know dried herbs are fine you know, when you're just starting out and remember this is just starting out so this is just getting your your little um, batch together and uh, it's not too hard for you to 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 do so the first one we have now this is in no particular order and um, is basil and basil is a uh, it's seen kind of like the witch's herb. It is used for protection uh, and it is said that any any place that basil is is grown then the place is, is protected. I wouldn't call it like a, a high level protection but it is, you know, it is used for protection. It's always also used for love, um, cleansing, um, wealth spells, uh, good luck, uh, anything that you want to have um, an abundance of. So uh, it's good to add in, in um, wealth spells or love spells or you know blessings because it, it um, adds to the, the abundance or the more of uh, something. The next one we have is rosemary and rosemary is one of those plants that, that like basil that every every good witch should have yeah, rosemary is another one that that does you know jewel things um, multiple things it's it's for love it's for beauty it's for protection um, it um, helps and aids um, with with bad dreams it helps to bring clarity to a to a situation um, it helps to empower um, it is, it is used for, for lots of things. You can use it uh, um, in a floor wash with a little bit of salt uh, and uh, to, to rid a, a space of any kind of negative kind of um, ick. Uh, but it also uh, refreshes the, the place and gives it energy. So it's one of those ones that can get rid of but also replace the energy because that's one of those big things that that lots of people kind of gloss over a little bit is when you banish you need to actually put in something in its place and rosemary is one of those ones that do, does both it banishes but it also puts in those good vibes uh, so you can use it 
uh, to as an incense. You can use it uh, as a floor wash. You can even use it uh, to to sprinkle or asperge uh, an area with uh, some holy water or some some type of of water. You can use it to cleanse an area. Now, sage is another one of those those herbs that you hear everyone everyone has sage. You know, if you're in any kind of spiritual um, spiritual pursuit that sage seems to be the the uh, the top of the list of, of of things everyone has sage i'm not a big fan of sage i don't i don't enjoy burning sage uh, but that doesn't mean that you know, it doesn't work for others so you can make it into a tea uh, because if if you're going through certain um situations um, or, or, or things that you need to, to come to terms with. Uh, it helps uh, in a way of, of the saying like um, it, with digestion. So there's not only the digestion of, of food but the digestion of certain, uh, certain ideas and concepts or, or emotions uh, that you need to kind of embrace and, and digest and, and uh, not not kind of expel so to speak so it helps with with that digesting of of ideas it helps to purify and cleanse and banish which is what everyone um, mainly uses sage for and uh, sage has comes in lots of different varieties uh, so there's there's cooking sage as well as the uh, the sage which I think is called prairie sage which most people think use for the prairie sage and white sage is what they use for uh, for smudging and, and whatnot, um, but uh, yeah, great thing to have in your witch's closet. We have bay laurel, and bay laurel is another one of those those ones that you that you see a lot. Uh, it's good for prophecy and visions. It's good for purification. Uh, it's good for lending positive energy into a space. Uh, it's it's good for for writing uh, wishes down onto onto leaves, and then uh, you, know, you can cast them into the into a, a river, or you can burn them, and the smoke goes up to the to the gods. Uh, it is just one of those ones that if you also are wanting uh, some kind of prophetic dreams or, or visions, then you will burn a little bit of uh, bay leaf, and it will help. Uh, to open up those psychic areas. So the next one we have is cloves, and cloves are they're kind of like little nails. Uh, they're they're used in in medical um, in a medical way to to soothe uh, toothaches. And I remember I remember when I was was younger, I uh, I had some toothaches, and and you had like a bit of clove oil that you would put put on the on the tooth area as the as the tooth was emerging. Um, and uh, it helped to kind of soothe that, that aching feeling. So they can be used for protection. They can be used to, uh, to raise the vibrations of, of an area. Uh, clove is very great for, for putting into incense. Uh, it smells wonderful. Uh, it is good for luck and prosperity spells also. And uh, it's one of those... Uh, it's one of those herbs that, uh, as I said, is, is a good, good all-rounder, good for protection, but also good for, for bringing in uh, good vibrations. Next one we have is cinnamon. And uh, like the cloves, the cinnamon smells just divine. And it is one of those ones that has a... a has many many uses so cinnamon can be used for um, bringing in money it can be used for cleansing purification it can be used for for passion so igniting passion uh, so you know, if you're, you're having some kind of um, sex spell as opposed to so much as a, a love spell or if you're um, just finding that the the passion is starting to wane within your within your uh, love life then then cinnamon is also a good good one to use um, it is used quite extensively in uh, in love spells and money spells and it can be considered as an aphrodisiac and I suppose for some money is an aphrodisiac so I can see where that uh, that comes together 
uh, it, it basically heats things up and uh, as we know that anything that, that heats things up, it speeds things up, it gives passion, it, you know, it gives quickness to, uh, to spells. So the next one we have is time. So it is something that you find again a lot in your pantry and it, it wouldn't uh, go um, it wouldn't it wouldn't stand out in your in your pantry as something that was uh, overtly witchy so it's good for attracting um, luck and money banishing negativity um, it's good for health um, it's good for purifying your home uh, so you've got quite a few now that you can um, use as a quick um, quick way of purifying and um, you know doing a little bit of a house blessing if, if that's what you you want with some of these herbs that you can find in your pantry. So uh, it's also great for, for cooking and uh, again these herbs are used in cooking all the time and if you think about infusing energy into the food that you make with those herbs then there is another class of spells that you, you can use where you are putting intention and love and um, and energy into the food that you that you cook um, with your your magical herbs. Um, they're also good for, um, for curbing nightmares, helping you to have um, uh, sleep that's that's free from nightmares, but also helps you to have those prophetic dreams, those uh, psychic uh, dreams. We have mint, and uh, mint is. Is refreshing and invigorating and helps to to uh, to give you um, energy helps to pick you up uh, if you're if you're feeling uh, a little bit uh, low on energy uh, is a great one for a drink if you if that's how you how you like that having a bit of mint uh, it, as I said it's refreshing uh, it heats things up as well when it comes to to spells so it um, helps with uh, prosperity spells and it's good for for communication and um, just um, adding a a little extra to to a spell just giving it that little bit of freshness if you if you will again it can be added in uh, in, in things like teas um, incense um, you can have it in a ritual bath um, and uh, it's, it's you know, again refreshing and helps with uh, a bit of divination and uh, helps to enhance some of those uh, psychic abilities as well. Now this isn't technically a herb but we have chilies and again chilies are something that you would find um, in, in, a, in a pantry just to you know if you're having a curry or, or or something that you want to want to heat up. So again, this is about heating something up. Uh, chilies are used for protection. Um, they're used to banish things. Um, they're used to uh, you know heat something up like a, a passion or passionate love. And uh, it's one of those ones that can be used to um, say to, to curse as well as to um, to uh, to love and, and to give uh, give passion to or energy to. You can use uh, the the actual peppers themselves as a way of uh, protection magic, and I have a a uh, a video of that if you want to. Um, have a look at that. I might put a put a link down below for that one. But they're used for for protection. Uh, they're used to add fieriness, passion to to a uh, to a spell, and uh, it's um it's just empowering your magic and give it that little bit of extra oomph, a little bit of fire. Uh, so you can use the the seeds itself, or you can use the actual pepper itself. I mean, you, uh, with these sorts of things, your imagination is your only stumbling block. Uh, so it can be used in quite a few different ways. So the next one we have is, is pepper or black peppercorns. And these can be used not only for protection, but they can also be used, um, say, in, in an offensive way where you, are, um, you, know, you can use to curse or attack. Uh, it all just depends on 
you know, the mind of the practitioner, the, the energy of the practitioner. And that goes back to any herb. Any herb used in a certain way can be used to harm or to, to, um, to protect. So um, you know, everything has its positive and a negative or its dark and its light side. So um, thinking about what that is and how you're going to use that herb will, will normally um, dictate what you're going to be using. So the black uh, black pepper is also one of the ingredients, um, or can be one of the ingredients in uh, witch's salt or black salt, uh, as used in a protective manner. But uh, it can also be used to again um, because it is um, irritating and uh, and it can make things hot and, and irritate. So it can be used in a way to, of defensive uh, or um, you know cursing kind of magic where you can make people feel uncomfortable which is why it's used a lot in um, also uh, recipes for hot foot powder where it is about irritation making people feel uncomfortable in that area. So I hope you enjoyed that. As you can see there are simple herbs that you can use every day. They have multiple purposes so you'll be able to maximize your spell work with the minimum amount of fuss. And then as you grow and as you can get more and more things in your toolbox, then you can start getting some of those exotic herbs, some of those things that, uh, that are a little bit hard to get by and sometimes they are a little bit more expensive. And um, yeah, it's uh, witchcraft doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be expensive. So uh, use the KISS method, keep it simple and uh, blessed be. If you like this video and want to see more, please click on the links provided. If you think this witchcraft thing may be for you, please subscribe. Blessed be.